Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus, where we strive for supernatural immunity from the wickedness of today's world by focusing on the inspired, infallible words of Holy Scripture. Before we begin today's discussion, a short prayer. All blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I pray to Almighty God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so my power to speak truth without error, and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God. Any errors are my own. I also pray that you, the viewer and listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit so that any truth I speak or any scripture that I interpret correctly is welcomed in your heart, your mind, and your soul. If you end up enjoying today's video, please give it a thumbs up, a positive comment, share. If you haven't already done so, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. If you don't like the video for whatever reason, feel free to give it a thumbs down and or a negative comment. But please, if you do give it a negative comment, watch the entire video and point out to me what I stated in this video that you believe is wrong. Now let us begin the discussion. Today's discussion is in the Dismantling the World Mission Society Church of God playlist and is entitled The Holy Trinity. So here we are. World Mission Society Church of God East Coast Beliefs Holy Trinity. The meaning of the Holy Trinity. The Trinity means that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one and the same God. The same one God plays three different roles with three different names and appearances. Well, the Holy Trinity actually means there's one being that's God, one essence of God, but there are three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all God. There's only one God, but the Father is not the person of the Son. The Father is not the person of the Holy Spirit. The Son is not the person of the Father or the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is comparable to the transformation of water from solid to liquid to gas. While the appearance of water and even its name changes in the different states, it remains the same chemical compound water. In the same way, God the Father, Jehovah, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit are in essence one and the same God. Jehovah is the name of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's the name of the family of God. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit are God, just like liquid water, solid ice, and gas vapor are all H2O. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. He will be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. God the Father, Jehovah, is God the Son, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. According to the prophecies about God the Father taking on the human form. Uh-oh, major heresy here. So no, God the Son, that person of God took on human form and joined creation, not God the Father. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Right? Future prophecy of the Messiah child. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Pele Yoes, Wonderful Counselor, El Gibor, Mighty God, Abiyad, Everlasting Father, Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. Wonderful, Pele. Judges chapter 13, verse 18. And the angel of the Lord said to him, this is Manoah, the father of Samson, why do you ask my name, seeing it is wonderful, peli, wonderful. So notice the Messiah child will be the angel of the Lord, born in human flesh, wonderful. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20 to 21. Behold, I send an angel before thee. This is the person of the father, Jehovah, God speaking, sending an angel. This is the angel of the Lord who's the pre-incarnate son, also Jehovah, but a different person. And he's the messenger of the Father. He's the messenger of the Father's face. He's the voice of the Father. He's the word of the Father. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. But only God can. Well, this angel is God, just not the person of the Father. It's the Son, for my name is in him. Jehovah is in him. That's the family name. Just... It's not just the name of the Father. Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. Do you want to see the two persons of yod heh vav -Heh interacting? Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. Then the Lord, this is the Lord that was on earth that interacted with Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 and uh, with Lot actually uh, just prior to this in Genesis 19. Rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Oh, two yod heh vav -Hehs interacting one force. The first Lord is the person of the Son, who appeared as a man and interacted with Abraham and Lot. And then the second is the person of the Father. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 3 to 4. 
I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. If you look at the bottom, kedosim of the holy, look to the right, is a plural word. So it's the knowledge of the holy ones. Who are the holy ones? Who hath descended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? That's Lord God. What is his name? Jehovah. And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? So Jehovah has a son. The Father has a son, but there's only one God. God is a family, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not water. And the Father is not the person, the Son, and the Father did not take on flesh. Heresy. Counselor. U.S., right? Isaiah chapter 28, verse 29. This also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel, counsel and excellent in working. Notice, wonderful in counsel. Hipli esa. Hipli. Notice it's Hebrew Strong 6381. And then uh, over there, Pele, right, is 6382. And then in counsel esa, 6098. And that's derived from counselor, U.S., Hebrew Strong's 3289. El Gibor, mighty God. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21, the remnant shall re return, which is Sher Jashu, by the way. That's the son of Isaiah from Isaiah chapter 7, who God tells Isaiah to bring to the meeting with Ahaz. I wonder why. The remnant shall return, Sher Jashu, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God, El Gibor. Prince of Peace, right? Sar Shalom. Daniel chapter 8, verse 11, yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. That's the KJV. How about the NIV? It set us off up to as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. It took away the daily sacrifice from the Lord, and the sanctuary was thrown down. So the prince of the host is the commander or the captain of the army of the Lord. Where do we see that person? Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and said to him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain or commander or prince of the host of the Lord am I now come. Right? So it's, you know, are you for us? Or are you for the people of Jericho and the captain of the host of the Lord? The prince is obviously the pre-incarnate son, again appearing as a man, says, No, you're for me. Uh, Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto a servant? And the captain, commander, prince of the Lord's host said unto him, Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Hey, where have we seen that before? Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And looked, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses says, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord, notice, see, angel of the Lord, that's the pre-incarnate said, Lord, because he's the Lord. Just not the same person as another person, the Lord. And we saw those two persons interacting in Genesis 19, 24, didn't we? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, pay attention, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy ground. Notice the angel of the Lord using the same word here to Moses that the captain or the prince of the Lord's host said to Joshua, in Joshua chapter 5. Uh, For the place whereupon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Genesis chapter 49, regarding peace. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Verse 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, the kingdom, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Right? So the kingdom, when did the kingdom depart from Judah? You could argue when the first temple was destroyed. When did the lawgiver depart from between his feet? You could argue when the second temple was destroyed and you know, the, um, the Roman armies uh, you know, destroyed the second temple, destroyed Jerusalem, and basically kicked the Jews out of their land and they didn't have self-rule. Until Shiloh come, peace, that's the Messiah. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding is full into the vine, and his ass is colt under the choice vine. We know what that refers to, right, in the New Testament. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. We know what that refers to, right? His crucifixion. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his te teeth white with milk. Why would his eyes be red with wine? I'm not sure, but if you look at Revelation, he has eyes as a flame of fire, and teeth white with milk. Well, it could refer to 
in the book of Revelation, he has a sword, two-edged sword of truth, right, coming out of his mouth. And again, we saw the, the captain of the host in Joshua chapter 5 with the sword, right? John chapter 20, verse 19, again, referring to peace. This is the resurrected Lord. Then the same day at evening, this is the Sunday, right? Being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto the peace be unto you. Uh, two verses later, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you, as my father sent me, even so I send you. Then five verses later, eight days later, when Thomas is with them, and after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you, right? Three pieces, he's the prince of peace. Now let's look at everlasting father, Abiyat. What it means is father of eternity or source of eternity because Lord Jesus is the source of eternal life. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 50. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. See, Ad is eternity. He's the father of eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So he's not the father who took on flesh. He's the son who took on flesh. He's the father of eternity because he's the person of God who gives us eternal life. The father doesn't do it. The son does. John chapter 1, verse 12. That's his role. But as many as received him, to them gave he, this is the Son, the Word who took on flesh, Lord Jesus Christ, power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So as you become a son of God by believing on the name of the Son. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So eternal life comes from believing in the person of the Son. John chapter 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. By the way, if you believe in the Son, you therefore believe in the Father, because you can't have a Father without a Son or a Son without a Father. You must believe in the Son, not just the Father. It wasn't the Father who took on flesh, it was the Son. He's the source of eternal life, and thus the Father of eternity and many times described as everlasting father. He's not the person the father. John chapter 6, verse 27, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. John chapter 6, verse 40, And this is the will of him that sent me, the will of the Father, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Notice, who gives us everlasting life? The person of the Son. Who will raise up, uh, us up at the last day? The person of the Son. So who's the father of eternity, the everlasting father? The son, not the father who took on flesh. The father never took on flesh. That's heresy, and it shows how this cult doesn't understand these things, do they? Just like, as I've shown, they don't really understand anything. John chapter, other than how to lie to people and, and, and lead them to a false Christ and, and to Gehenna. John chapter 10, verse 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, speaking to the sister of Lazarus. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection of the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? John chapter 17, verses 1 to 2. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. See, one God, two persons. They're glorifying each other. As thou hast given him power, the son, power over all flesh, that he, the son, should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So that's why the everlasting father is the son, the father of eternity, the source of eternity. It's not because the father took on flesh. John chapter 8, verse 44. And notice, other people can be called father and not God the father. Ye of your father the devil. So is the devil God the father? He's being called father. No, he's not. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. So someone's the father of the lies. That's not God the father. The father of these Jews, their spiritual father is the devil. That's not God the father. All right. So just because father is used, even in a spiritual sense, doesn't necessarily mean God the father. John chapter 8, verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Oh, Abraham's being called their father, therefore he's God the father. No, pathetic, not. And similarly in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and again, I think the best way of describing it isn't everlasting father, it's either father of eternity or source of eternity. Continuing, the prophet Isaiah wrote that God the Father Jehovah would be born as a child in human form. No, he didn't. It also teaches us that God the Father Jehovah is God the Holy Spirit. Oh boy. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. And God the Son Jesus is God the Holy Spirit. 
Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Understanding the Holy Trinity is crucial to understanding God's plan of salvation. Well, they don't understand the Holy Trinity, and I agree. They need to understand the Holy Trinity to understand God's plan of salvation. Well, guess what? They don't. So they don't understand the Holy Trinity, and they therefore obviously don't understand God's plan of salvation at all. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. But God, meaning God the Father, hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Does that mean God the Father is the same person as God the Spirit, God the Holy Spirit? No, that's not what it says. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. That does not mean that God the Father is the same person as God the Spirit. That's not what it says at all. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Let's be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So the Lamb, the Son, is marrying his wife, the church. Okay. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. How does this prove, Lord Jesus, it, the Son is the same person, the Holy Spirit? It doesn't. So Revelation 19, verse 7. The Lamb, the Son, marries the bride, the church. And Revelation 22, 7. The Holy Spirit and the church say, Come. And by the way, the bride there could even be New Jerusalem. Because in Revelation 19, the bride is the church. But in Revelation 21, the bride is New Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem, descending into the new creation. Come, and let him that heareth say, come, and let him that is the thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So these verses do not prove, because it's false, of course, that God the Father is the same person as God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son is the same person as God the Holy Spirit. Pathetic. And let's pay attention to these verses. And I'm not going to show you everything, but just look at these verses, which completely prove these are separate persons, one God, separate persons. John chapter 14, verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Notice there's three persons. The Father, one person, is sending the Holy Ghost. He's not sending himself in the name of another person, but they're all God. There's the Trinity. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. John chapter 15, verse 26, But when the comfort is come, who I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So John 14, 26 proves the Father and the Holy Ghost aren't the same person. The Father is sending the Holy Ghost. You don't send yourself, you send another person. Similarly, the Son is sending the Holy Ghost because they're both sending the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 15, verse 26, John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Oh, who's he speaking of? The other persons of God, the Father and the Son. Oh, okay. They're not all the same. It's the same God, one family, but they're not the same person. That's the Holy Trinity. So this cult doesn't treat, teach the true Holy Trinity. It teaches this bizarre oneness heresy and calls it the Holy Trinity and obviously doesn't understand salvation, and all their doctrines are false and demonic, of course. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So here's a verse that really proves it all and destroys all heresies. John chapter 17, verse 24. Father, I will that they also, his disciples, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. He's going to be in heaven. That they may behold my glory. Remember, he lowered himself to take on the role of a servant. He's going to go back to his true role of king of kings, lord of lords in heaven. They're going to see his glory there, which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world, right? Father and son loved each other before creation. Before creation is the eternal uncreated state when only God existed. Well, there's two separate persons of the one God existing prior to creation, loving each other. Love proves it all. Eternity, creation. So, hmm. So if God is just one person, right? If God is just one person, then love is narcissism, right? <laughs> liquid, water, solid, ice, gas, vapor. And God only understood true love, loving another person when he created angelic spirit beings and human beings. So God was alone, no one to love, no one to talk to, no one to care about, nothing to do, and now we complete him. Completely false. See, there's always been love. God is love. The God is a family of eternal love, friendship and communion, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's always been love. The Father and Son always loved each other. And because of that love, that's why they did creation. We're going to marry into that family because family is everything. God is family. We join his family. There's eternal family of love, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One family, one God, three persons. That's love. 1 John 4, 8. Notice how important this is. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Eight verses later, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. God is love means love is eternal, right? Means there's always been love. Meaning prior to creation there was love, but love is loving another person, proving that God is more than one person. 
That's the Trinity, World Mission Society, Church of God. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. They also love one another. See, it's not love yourself because God's narcissism. Just love yourself because that's what I do. No, no, no. Love each other like I love you because God the Father loved me. John 15, 9, as the Father have, me, have loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. Love proves it all. So wicked falsehoods in that wicked cult. So I hope you found that edifying. God bless and keep you all. Amen. I pray I spoke truth and interpreted Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the viewer and listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, positive comment, share. If you haven't already done so, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. Again, if you don't like the video for whatever reason, feel free to give it a thumbs down and or a negative comment. But again, if you do give it a negative comment, I hope you've watched the entire video and please point out to me what I stated in this video that you believe is wrong. God bless and keep you all. Come Lord Jesus.